Hi Forrester fans, I'm Peyton Tabor. I'm a junior here at the college and I'm doing the Coaches Show with Coach Cat, where we sit down and talk about last week's game and the upcoming one. So this week we talked about last week's game against Grinnell and the upcoming game on the road against Monmouth. Here it is. Hi Coach. First off, congrats on being 7-0 and 6-0 in the conference and on the big win last weekend. Thanks. A lot of fun to, to be in this spot better than anything else, and we, we want to know again, so that's always helpful. Yeah, for sure. So this past weekend, you guys won 79-0, to and this is one of the most lopsided victories in school history. Have you ever been a part of a win like this before? Not really. I mean, to be honest with you, we uh, we had great respect for Grinnell. I mean, they, they have some really talented players, and we were uh, we were on a different level on Saturday. I mean, every play we called seemed to work. Every our players were executing at a high level, and um, you know we had a couple of guys who had really stand out big plays early. I think our explosiveness early really um, turned the corner of where the game probably we expected it to be. I mean, we had I think five touchdowns over 35 yards, and I'm not sure we were expecting that. So they're very fast drives, um, and the points just piled up quickly. So it was it was really good for us. Yeah. Um, Coach A.J. Jackson set two school records, one for touchdown receptions in a game. He had six, and the previous record was four. And he also broke the single game record for receiving yards with 275. And he did it all in just one and a half. <laughs> Coach, what does that say about him? Because he's been on quite a tear the past few weeks. Yeah, I don't think anybody's uh, going to fall asleep on who A.J. Jackson is as a football player out there. I mean, what's funny is he actually crossed the goal line eight times in the first half. Uh, but had two of them called back due to penalties and didn't actually score on those drives. So he, he could have really blown up the whole NCAA record book uh, just in the first half. But, I mean, he's super talented. He's fast. He's strong. He's, um, he spends a lot of time on his craft getting better and looking for those little opportunities to improve his game. Uh, there's never a day after practice that he's not asking for something else or coming in and watching more film or, you know, asking, hey, coach, you know, on this route, can I do this or is it not good? Okay. I understand why it's not good here. Can I do it in this situation? And he's, he thinks at a very high level about football. And I think that's the part that's maybe misunderstood. People just see this big, fast guy out there, and they think that's all it is. But the amount of effort he puts into things beyond. And, and then beyond that, who he is as a person is the guy that every you know every coach, every parent, every player wants to be around. He's, he's kind. He's caring. He takes care of his teammates. And he puts that even at the forefront of his mind to take time away from everything else so he can do that. He's the guy that's going to reach out, find guys, spend time with them to make sure they're doing all right. Um, so I think with that caretaker mindset that he has, it makes him take care of his business too, and I, I think that's really strong for him. Mm -hmm. So, Coach, with a win like this, what are the key takeaways that are going to carry over into this weekend's game against Monmouth? Because they're 6-1 overall, but also 6-0 in the conference, just like us. So what challenges does this game bring? Yeah, I mean, this is the best team in the league. And you have to say that because in the last four years, the five years, they have not lost a conference game, regular season conference game. So the challenge for us is to play that. Now, we also haven't played them since 2018. So we have to kind of get back to seeing them in person. And um, it, it'll be a lot of fun. I mean, I, Coach Braun, who's their head coach, is probably one of the two coaches in the conference I'm closest to, him and Coach Sankson at Beloit. So back-to-back -back weeks with those guys. Uh, but we, we're, meant, we're defensive minded guys. And the fact that I'm over on the offensive side of the ball, I'm just hoping he hasn't kicked me off the club already. So I, you know, I want to stay in that group. Um, but they're talented. They run the football really well. We're, we're really mirror images of each team, right? They have a really strong defense. They have two really talented running backs. And then they're explosive in the passing game because of what they do in the run game. And then I look at our tape, and I'm like, oh, really good defense, two really good running backs, explosive in the passing game. And so I'm like, it, there's a lot of the way our two teams are structured and built that is very similar um, and I think that it's just going to be a game of, you know, there's going to be give and take on both sides, and we just have to be ready to weather that because we really haven't had that kind of game this year. Um, the scoring margins we've had in our games have been a lot wider, um, you know, 25, 35 points, depending on which game it is. And I think that this week, you know, we have to be prepared for a much closer, much more hotly contested game, and we got to go for the full 60 minutes. Yeah. You kind of touched on this a little bit with their explosiveness on offense, but this past weekend, our defense only gave up seven yards of offense, but now they're facing a team that had over 550 yards of offense in their last game. So what players on Monmouth stand out to you that your defense is going to need to keep in check? Yeah, so their they're running backs are Mr. Francois, their starting tailback, is really, really talented. He's been a first-team all-conference running back before, but it doesn't end there. They've got a young man named Devin Lawrence, who's another running back who's really good. And both of those guys can be 100-yard rushers quickly if you don't corral them and, and do a good job tackling. Um, that wide receiver, 
Um, they've got two guys, number eight, um, Graham, who is really talented. You know, he's been an explosive, been super successful in our league since he came into it. Um, and so I, I think that they're, they're wide receivers. To, but where they really create some confusion is they have two different quarterbacks that they play. Um, and Carter Boyd has a rocket of an arm. He can throw the ball all over the field. And then Riley Fetter, who's also a very efficient quarterback, but he can run. And he's had two games this year where he's had over 100 yards rushing as a quarterback. Um, so we have to be really prepared for that. It's just going to be a very different approach because you can't just say, okay, we're going to stop this. And that's the only thing we have to – if we stop this this week, we win the game. That, that doesn't happen with Monmouth. They're, they're too multifaceted. So we have to play um, a really great overall game against their offense. Mm -hmm. Coach, going on the road for a huge conference game, what characteristics of your team need to shine in order for us to come out on top? I just seem to be just like they were for the Illinois College game. They got to handle the travel, the overnight. That was the first overnight we had in two years, and they handled that great. So as long as we approach it the same way this week, um, I don't want anything else to change. I, I want us to be a 1-0 and football team that's focused on that day, focused on this game, um, no more, no less. And I, I think that so long as we um, continue to practice with great focus like we did yesterday, um, I, I think that that will be great for this week just making sure that we travel well, blind out all the distractions, and focus on the individual tasks at hand that each guy has to do, and, and not try to do more than that. If they just do what they're supposed to do, um, execute and stay in that moment, will be, will be great. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you had to describe your team in one word, what would it be, and how does that translate into this weekend's game? Gritty. And I, think, I don't think I'd get much pushback from our guys on that one. We've got, we've got just enough grit and just enough – um, you know, tenacity to kind of balance it off. And so on Saturday, it's that moment that when something doesn't go well, you know, when you win a game like we did this past week, I mean, everything went well. And so now you go into this game next week, and when that first three and out happens or that first, you know, turnover happens or we make a mistake somewhere on the field, being resilient, coming back, playing the next play and not letting that hinder and become a hangover that stays there for three to four plays. Let it be a one-play thing snap and clear, go to the next play. And as long as we do that, our grittiness will be on display for everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually all I had for you today, Coach. So best of luck against Monmouth, and I look forward to chatting with you next week after another Forrester victory. Awesome. Thank you so much. Go Foresters.